Hi, it's Sandra here. Welcome to my channel and this is yet another polymer stamp making video. Right, I'm using the VX55 gel which Collop sent me. Very nice of them. Uh, they sent it to me so I could test it out for you because I don't get that gel here. I get another version of Collop's gel that isn't available elsewhere. I I have just been doing some experimentation on timing and so I'm just going to move this out of the way because this isn't relevant. Now this is the lamp that I've been using for this particular experiment and ignore the pattern on here, that's just a piece of scrap card. What I decided to do was have a look at the way that my lamps are set up. Now normally I have these lamps facing the other way so that they face out like so and that is the way that I've been doing it for over a year because I found that to actually experiment and get the times right it was quite hard enough without having lamps at such a sensitivity that you know five seconds or two seconds or whatever it is would so drastically affect the result. So as you notice the inside of this has got a reflective surface and I have now got the lamps turned so that they do actually face inwards as averse to outwards just to see whether I can successfully do a stamp with it that way. And I've just been playing around with a smaller nail um, UV lamp, <laughs> LED UV lamp, and got some timings for that for very small stamps, and it is possible to use. Um, I will link the previous video in this one. And what I did when I was using that is I put everything on top of a non-reflective base because the other lamp that I have doesn't have a base to it at all and I'm using a glass mat here. I wonder if that affects the timing at all. So in order to even things out, I put this piece of card underneath my stamp making sandwich and for this particular experiment I've kept it in this lamp too. So what I did was I made up my usual sandwich and I made it up with this design. Ignore this one because I decided I didn't want to bother doing all of them. But these, I mean you can see the size of my nail, the size of these, these are really really fine. This is again printed on normal tracing paper with a laser printer at the highest quality that I can do. But you can still see through it, I mean I can still see the shadow of my finger underneath there, it's not you know, completely opaque. So. I have this design, put it in my sandwich with glass plate on the bottom, design, piece of cellophane, my stamp spacer, put the gel in and put a piece of plastic on the back. Now the stuff that I am using for the back is like document folders cut up and it is slightly opaque and it does make a difference if this is opaque or not. If whatever you're putting on the back of the stamp is perfectly clear, then the timing for the back of your stamp will be slightly less, okay? So I made it up with that, and I am pleased to say I have got an amazing result. Just look at that. And what I did with this is I gave it 10 seconds on the back, and I do use a digital timer, you have to, you can't do it any other way, you can't fudge it. And 30 seconds on the design side. And washed out. And it looks as though it is perfect. But what I'm going to do is just get a scrap of paper. And I've not stamped this one before, so what's going to come out of it is as much a mystery to me as it is to you. And I'm just going to use some memento of black ink. Now you do put stamps in a shallow dish of water and then cure them once you've washed them out. You cure them again for two or three minutes and I usually give it three minutes. And that really hardens it up. 
absolutely and totally perfect. Not a fault there. Totally stamped perfectly the very first time. And I haven't treated it with anything. I didn't do anything to it. I just washed it out and you know, put it through the water again. And that was it. Nothing else. Now, if you can do a stamp that fine, I don't think you have any problem whatsoever with getting writing as fine as you may want it. So that was 10 seconds on the back, 30 on the front, with the lamps in their forward facing position. You can't actually see it because the paper's falling forward. There we go. The forward facing position like so. So normally if I turn them the other way, then it takes longer. But if you are finding that you're over curing everything, you might want to start off with your lamps turned round facing outwards, simply so you've got a bit more wriggle room. Because on this, yes, I've been lucky and it's come out exactly as it should with that timing, but I could so easily have overcooked it just by two seconds or maybe one second or even less because those lamps put out so much power you know, so rapidly that you can easily overcook. Even on the tiny little nail lamp that I used in my last video, you can overcook it very, very quickly indeed. But that is the VX55 gel. It is green tinted. It works perfectly and this stamp is really firm and high quality and it's got a decent base on it and it's got a decent relief on it. If you don't want as much base, then put more of the timing on the front than you do on the back. But I tend to like mine 50-50, pretty much. There we are.